Before we move on to the prologue, I just want to clarify a point. I said in the last section that um, Pilate was in the... Well, I didn't really say that, but they talked about the Palace of Herod. The archaeologists over there now have traced a different route of, for the carrying of the cross. It's more logical, actually. Pilate always occupied what had been Herod's palace when he came to Jerusalem. He never liked Jerusalem. He never lived there. He detested it because it's a rowdy. And, of course, the Jews hated him, so he wasn't happy there. So he lived in Caesarea uh, Maritima, down by the sea. But he came up for the feast. So he's, he was up for Passover. And he would be living in what had been Herod's palace. Um, so that's... I'm glad I clarified that. Um, okay. Now... We come to what in some ways is the masterpiece of the whole Bible. This text, which is so beautiful, so redolent. Now, I'm going to try to do what I can with it in the time that I have here. But I really ask you to take this text and pray. Come into the presence of God. We're going to be talking about the inner life of God. And John knows this inner life. And he knows, therefore, who it is who is incarnate in Jesus Christ and what happened then. Um, and so I'm going to start. Um, in the beginning, the Word already was. Anarchy in Holoyos. The, the um, verb is a per imperfect verb. The word was. In other words, when creation put a sheet in the beginning, and he's purposely talking about the beginning that's referred to in Genesis. Wherever you place that beginning, the word already was. He is infinite. He's eternal. So place the beginning wherever you think is it 10 million, 50 million, whatever years ago? The Word already was. And he was pros ton theon. He was turned toward theos. Theos, as I've already pointed out to you, I think, before, is God the Father. You see? And yet, the next line says, and the Word was theos. Well, now, just a minute. You tell me he's turned toward Theos, and then you say he is Theos. How else do you describe the Trinity? You see? But how do we enter into this vision so that we just don't repeat the words and preach it, but we know what we're talking about? There are probably many ways. What I do is I entrust my mind to the Mother of God. And just say, take my mind, bring it there. Let me catch just a glimpse of this for my own salvation and for what I have to preach to others. Let me get that breathtaking vision of Theos, the Father, the Principium Deitatis, the principle of the deity. You see? Anarchy, there is Theos, then at the beginning, the Word already was. And he was turned toward God. In fact, you see, you can say of him that he is God as well. He's divine as well. You see? This is how things were. Or he was anarchy, proston theon. He repeats himself. Unless you're getting mixed up. If, if, if he's proston theon, then how can he be theos? And he repeats himself. He was in the beginning, prost on theon, toward, turned towards God, with God, it's often translated. I don't know how the translation goes for this feast. With God. It's hard. Prost, I mean, if you want to get it in one word, like the, like the uh, Greek text, you've got to say with. He's with the Father. Okay? 
Now, who is this Logos then? Everything came about through him. Now, you see what I mean? What does that mean? Now, St. Thomas Aquinas has a great commentary on this. A little tough to go, but glorious. And it's in English. Um, You know, everything came about di of tu. This is what, this is part of what it means. The Father from all eternity with great complacency, great love, generates a son from all eternity. There was never a moment when there wasn't a son. And he looks upon that son in which he has poured forth the whole of his being. Everything the father is, the son is, except being father. So when he sees the son, he sees his own full potential. And gazing on that, he creates. The son is the model for creation. There's a beautiful statue. It's a carved over the over one of the doors at chart, where there's God the Father is creating. And in the back of his mind, there's a little atom. This whole thing is for man. It's beautiful. You see, we've lost a lot. Okay? Anyway, Pantadi, after everything came about through him, and without him came about nothing that was. Now, or nothing. Who they in? Now, this, this, this line, verses 3 and 4, are um, controverted. I think I have the NAB here. Um, no, he's going to do it that way. See, what came about in him was life. How could it be in him and not be life? He's the Word of God. Everything the Father is, He is. And they look on one another with such love that that love brings forth another person, the Trinity, the Spirit. That's who they are. And this man was gifted to describe some of this for us. But you can understand how it would take you know, a long time. I would think that we priests would be nice to memorize it, even if in English. <laughs> okay, English is fine. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and repeat it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. See, all things came about through Him, and without Him nothing came about. What came about in him was life. And the life is the light of men. Light. Where would we be without light? Light is the or, the first thing God creates. It's the principle of organization. It's the, uh, you are the light of the world. You know, you see grandparents and the little child comes into the room and their face lights up. You see what light is? And so it says here, you see, uh, what came about in him was life. And this life is the light of men. They're alive, they breathe, they move, they love, they praise, they work, they relate, they make friends. All of that is a life that is light. You see? And this light was the light of men. And this light shines in the darkness. And we have now another echo of creation. We have all things came about, and now we have this tinge of darkness, right? And this light, this light which is the light of men, shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot grasp it, put it out. Yes, he forced us to sin, Satan, or tricked us into sinning, moved us into sinning. You can do what you want 
and you can call it good or evil. That's what knowing good or evil means. Isn't that a real temptation? I can do what I want and with impunity. I can say whether it's good or evil. You know where you see that, my friends? Abortion. I will do what I want and I will say whether it's good or evil. You see, that's the darkness. Um, then we have this part I'm going to skip for now. There was a man sent from God and his name was John. Now, very often when people talk about this part, they say this was just put in because some of the disciples of John the Baptist still thought John the Baptist was the Messiah, not Jesus. But can you imagine for such a trivial reason to put it into this text? No. No. This is talking about the greatest person, you know, the greatest prophet in the kingdom of God. And it's brought there to bring this whole thing down to earth. You see? Uh, he, he came as a witness that he might witness concerning the light. You see? That everyone might believe through him. That's our role when we preach. Huh? Not they believe us. They believe through us. They touch God. Oh, please, God, when we preach on this on Christmas Day, they can touch God. Okay? Um, He, Jesus, was the light. No, I'm sorry. He was the true light, Jesus, that shines, enlightens every man coming into this world. Every one of our thoughts Every one of our words is a participation in the divine light, in the divine word. If I had time, I could quote all kinds of texts from the fathers, from St. Thomas. Our wording is a share in the word. And so he goes through, and the word was made through him, and uh, uh, he came unto his own, and they didn't receive him. And then, finally, and the Logos This Logos, who already was at the beginning, became flesh and tented among us. And we saw his doxa, we saw his glory, the glory of an only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Then he concludes, Theos, nobody ever saw. God, no one ever saw. The only begotten Theos, you see how beautiful this is? There's Theos, and there's the only begotten Theos, you see? Who is Easton Kolpon. He is into the bosom of the Father. He is the one who's made him known. Everything we know about the Father, we know by looking at Jesus. He who sees me, sees the Father. So, you see, this morning, this morning when we're getting ready to preach, let's just take time. And help the people take time when you know to just gaze on him. You see, he is into the, the kolpos, just as John was leading on the kolpos at the Last Supper. He's leaning on the breast of the Father. He knows him, and he's told us all about him. He's acted out who he is. You see the love with which I love you and die for you? That's my father's love. That's Christmas.